computational thinking, be it an improvement to how we think by working with digital technologies, or a set of skills and techniques to improve problem solving, forms the fourth and most important of the thinking skills learnt through digital technologies. Project-based learning provides a solid structure in which this can develop, but it still needs to be supported. And teachers can provide this through direct instruction, textbooks, online tutorials, movies, excursions, guest speakers, all of which can scaffold student ability to engage in project-based learning, building students' entrepreneurial capital that they can draw upon when undertaking projects. But this should ideally progress towards independent learning, where students take responsibility for their own learning, managing teachers and the other resources they have available to provide them with the support that they need and to develop specific skills that they require to solve problems. The Australian curriculum provides a lot of flexibility in supporting this progression. There are learning outcomes that do need to be achieved by various year bands and teachers will need to provide students with the knowledge and skill development that their projects can meet these outcomes. But to fully realise the outcomes of the curriculum, you may need to reframe your teaching and learning activities to more fully support project-based learning. Now, there are three big challenges in the teaching of digital technologies. Firstly, teachers have never learnt the curriculum themselves at school. It is entirely new in content and scope, how it all fits together and progresses. And secondly, the very nature of digital technologies is that it changes every year. Yes, the curriculum was written around concepts that remain foundational and constant. The thinking skills will remain relevant, as will the learning outcomes. But technologies involved will continue to evolve. Better programming languages will emerge. New systems such as the Internet of Things will develop. And new technologies will be invented, particularly between the interactions between human biology the human mind and computers. The second big challenge is that the curriculum is being introduced all at once. The great danger in this is that every teacher at all year levels will do pretty much the same thing. Use the hour of code activities and many of the activities demonstrated in this course. This is fine for the first year, but if students face 11 years of essentially the same thing, we return to the disastrous outcomes of computer studies courses, where students were bored to death learning word processing, spreadsheeting and PowerPoint year after year. Project-based learning can do much to circumvent this trend, but there is still the need for a variety in supporting activities and careful mapping of these activities within schools. And finally, unlike most other areas of teaching, students will invariably know more than you about some technologies. Your expertise is in supporting them to learn and providing the structure of project-based learning, thinking skills development and a broad curriculum progression so that students do not narrow their focus too tightly and you provide them with a comprehensive digital technologies education. But you can utilise student interest and knowledge of specific technologies through collaborative learning, peer teaching, genius bars, and other approaches that create authentic student-centered learning environments. And as teachers, we move into the background and allow students to take control of their own learning. Now this takes time to develop for both students and teachers, but project-based learning provides an effective process by which this can be achieved. And in doing so, we create the learning environments envisaged by Seymour Papu where students are managing their own learning, unhindered by their teachers, and enhanced by digital technology and the computational thinking that this enables.